issues or for a solution that everybody was coming up with. Um, and but like that's, that was our kind of talking with that. Um, so in, so in, in, in summary, okay. not paying taxes, that money would, would fund. Would fund where would the fund be? Like, is it? Uh, so, so for me, yeah, yeah, and for me, so. But where, like? So, when you look at, when you look at, when you look at, we oftentimes use that term community. And I'm one who, we have communities within a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, we use that term to be thrown around like a frisbee. But a community moves in one direction. Like community, like, the prefix calm is coming together with unity is oneness, and we don't see that. But with this, you can see that. Oftentimes, we compare ourselves. So, from an educational standpoint, a lot of us are said to come from the continent, and this is what I'm going to say from a historical perspective. 1619, people come over. Those are all being changed. Oftentimes, people believe that the Caucasian is the one that was so But there are people that look like you or not. The discussion oftentimes is why can't people that look like us come together? Because we're not a monolith. We're all not the same. And that's, and that's the honest to God truth. And until we have like, real uncomfortable conversations, we can't really get to the solutions that we want. And again, like, that's what we're talking about. So when you have Jewish individuals who are Jew this Jewish community who came here around the late 1800s, influx in the 1900s, and they come and they own everything and everybody else's spot, but you can't own anything in theirs, <laughs> that's politicians and that's religious leaders that sell us off. You know, and we don't have the and, and these religious leaders and these politicians, they have names, they have addresses like everyone else. Now many of you probably know my sister, so my sister and I, we had these conversations. My sister uh, was the city council member for this area. So I, you know, so I watched her do certain things here, give out funds and help to develop certain things, and I'm not a politician by no stretch of the imagination. Um, and I watched, and people kind of get what you ask for. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a politician, so I don't care. So at the end of the day, you had an individual in office who was there for 12 years, didn't do anything whatsoever. A person came in here and was doing everything possible to help the place where she was from. She leaves out. The same woman that was there 12 years prior is now doing whatever. Ask her. And, you, and we sit here and we talk about the things that we need, but we don't put people in those places to get what we need, because many of us don't have the voices to speak to these politicians, and that's the honest to God truth. So when I was talking about, or when we was talking about this fix about a moratorium on your taxes, that's, that's for everybody. We don't have to worry about politicians, so to speak, you just need them to do what we're asking. Now you're doing what we're asking. Do what we're telling them to do. That's, we need to be in the business of telling, not asking. That's, that's, that's what we have in them. And we need to give that some, some validity. We're constantly asking, and people are asking of us. It's time that we start telling people what we're going to do. <laughs> because it, it, it doesn't move any other way. That's ownership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 the moral of all of this, the aim closing, remember, it has to be, you have to have, you have to be able to fund it, and it has to be rooted in policy. So the two things is that you have to have, you know, the crowdfund set up, and the Brownsville Club Cooperative 
or um, Center for Economic Development Corporation, either one of those two organizations are in a really, really good position to start, manage, and organize that crowd. Right? It's a matter of paperwork. It's a matter of an application. And there's enough brains in here to make sure that that application you know, gets submitted and approved. And either one of those two organizations should manage that. Now, the big fight would be to get you know, a tax incentive, right? That's what a moratorium on taxes is. And our country is not foreign to tax incentives by no means. If you can do it for one corporation and some of billions of dollars, then you can do it for one community you know, and some of a few hundred thousand dollars. But that has to be written. So this, you know, some of the greatest minds in Brownsville sit in this room right now. And those great minds are actually leading the organizations that should be a part of such legislation. And if that was the case, it would be easily written, easily researched, easily submitted. And if the support is already on the ground before that even happens, then it's easily passed. And if you have some place for that money to go, once it's passed, as opposed to every household just had this huge increase in income, and you make real investments. Because I say the word investment, and all the um, you know, uh, financial literacy coaches in the room, they really might just start thinking about the Dow Jones. But that's, you know, that's not investing, that's saving. That's the most responsible way for you to save in this country, is to put your money in the stock market because of the historical returns. But that's not investment. If you don't create jobs, you know, living wage jobs, and when I mean living wage jobs, I don't mean minimum wage jobs, living wage jobs, it means that you have to make $62,000, give or take three and a half thousand dollars out there in this community in order to be able to sustain yourself. Those are the type of jobs that you need to create. So if you're not doing that, then you're not really investing. You put your money in the stock market, great. That's smart, that's responsible. But that's not investment, that's saving. You go out there and you create a job, and you and it's economic entrepreneurship, which means that the job you create pays a living wage, then you're investing. That's real investment. So it has to be about who, it has to be about ownership, it has to be about you know, generational growth. Like you have to have something tangible that sustains time. And if you have a, a crowdfund that can support your investment, because now you've got this influx of cash and you put it in there, then you don't have to manage or have the responsibility, you know, like my brother Eli said, oh, I want to deal with that, my people do with me dirty, that's what you said, right? You don't even have to worry about that if another organization is actually dealing with your investments. We had another conversation about owning or buying or whatever the case might be. You don't even have to be qualified to do that, right? It's your community, it's your tax consortium, um, uh, uh, moratorium, it's you know your purchase. If you decide you want to buy something, break it down, and rebuild for the community benefit, and that's what the crowdfund is supposed to do. You don't have to worry about being credit worthy. You don't have to worry about having the money because everybody would actually have done it had funded. That could actually change things this generation, but you have to do the first the first two things first. You would have to have a policy, use the moratorium on, on taxes. And lastly, you would have to have a crowdfund so that you have a place to actually put that influx of cash so that you can make the immediate community changes. You can even buy this property here at a higher value than what it's actually worth because of what you're going to turn it into. So nothing would stop you from doing it. And if you're, and if you're, and if you're, you know, our, I use our mostly, our religious institutions who are actually real, then the monies that you do in tax exam, that money and stuff could actually go towards if someone has an idea of purchasing property. The same way this Jewish community goes to the rabbi, the grand rabbi, so they sit down and say, we want to buy this parcel of land. Like, they do that. But when you start looking at, we have, and, and this is not the knock on churches, because there's a bunch of religious institutions, but church in particular, you go on any block, and you can find like five joints all next to one another as, as if they're teaching a different God or something. Maybe they are, I don't know. But they all collect bread and they collect your money. That money should be going back to the people where everybody's getting something. So that's where the money could go. If you have some trustworthy 
religious leaders. I don't know. That yeah. sounds like a second funding source. <laughs> but if you set up the other two, then it's easy to make that argument to the person that is mostly concerned about themselves and the plot. But that would be a second funding source, which means that the pop would be even bigger. And we really wouldn't have an argument about whether or not we could buy our community. Especially since we know the money already existed, but I would know what's over in my taxes. Um, Sierra said in the room, she can tell you how much money we both think now. Right? It's Brownsville, though, right? Um, uh, uh, community that has the ability to evolve 
along the lines of economic mobility. So it leaves out none of the big organizations in here, the community board, the bid, and the um, economic development center. But what we said from the very beginning actually manages those two concerns while managing the economic concerns involved, creating jobs that pay living wages. But it would answer those two things first, and then we could deal about, you know, t-shirts and sneakers and movie videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You didn't have to be finished what I was trying to say earlier. I got you. <laughs> so you said the funding, and I was like, I don't know, I agree, like you said. But what you did, what, you, what I didn't get to say was, according to the 964 Code of Federal Regulation, Section 3, it, it already is in policy that residents can manage and own their own developments. And Brownsville, Brooklyn, right here where we live, the 11212, have the highest concentration of public housing in all of America. You understand, you can't go a separate block without running into a different development. Right. I mean, you got Howard here, you got here, Septo there, uh, uh, Van Dyke there, Lacey Hughes there, Till there. You made the point, so, you made the point. So, highest concentration in the world. So, Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. oh my God. Listen, this is amazing work. 
We're doing this every single month, but I just, I just want to say one thing. The reason why we are here is because everyone in this room is a leader, right? The Browns will help walk because our goal is to support community-led economic mobility strategies. I'm going to say that again. Community-led, meaning that the community are the leaders. And this Be Hub Cooperative is meant to support the development of the local leaders because at the end of the day, the current system has not worked. Mm -hmm. It needs to be revised. So Amber is absolutely right about uh, Hub Section 964, right? Section 3, right? That applies to housing. There are more folks who live here than in housing, right? So this is about the whole community. Right, but that, that was a great point. So I just want to, so this is the thing. We want to stay solution focused. We want to join our subcommittees. We want to tell our friends, our families to join a subcommittee. You gotta make, you gotta make it work, right? And so yeah, there's gonna be, you know, some differences of opinion, that's fine. But at the end of the day, the goal is to have solutions to move us forward. So with that being said, I just want to formally thank everyone for being here. I want to give a special shout out to Agape Food Rescue, Jeanette, are you in the building? Where is she? We got Jeanette to make your appearance. And all of those who help prepare the food, Chef Marquise. We have Raphael, Rocky, right? We have Ron Ramos.